So as you all may know, hardware wallets are a great way to keep your cryptocurrencies safe and secure. And as of a couple of years ago, the two main ones to use were Trezor and Ledger. But then there's been a flood of newcomers lately, like KeepKey, ColdCard, Cool Wallet, and so forth. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a brand new and super unique one called Hash Wallet, and also a bonus about the recent Trezor vulnerability and what you can do to fix that. So if you're curious to learn more, sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Okay, so a quick overview of Hash Wallet. It's a new kid on the hardware wallets block, and there's many unique differentiating points that we will dive into in a bit. But just on a high level, it's extra secure, non-programmable. They have an e-ink screen. It's robust card size design, biometric verification, an innovative recovery process, wireless charging, Bluetooth and NFC connectivity. And some other components around it are the Hash Wallet Manager and the Aero Certificate Program that we'll touch on as well. So the first aspect is that it's extra secure. One of its strongest properties is that it's non-programmable. Because if it's programmable, that means there's more attack vectors, for example, like man-in-the-middle attacks. And what that is, is if the data of your transmitted transaction may be intercepted by a hacker and altered when there's a vulnerability that can be exploited. So in that case, you think that you're signing your own transaction, but you're actually signing for the hacker. But because Hash Wallet is non-programmable, this is virtually impossible to do, and the device can't be altered. And what they call this is what you see is what you sign, or that acronym. In this case, you can verify the full transaction details on the e-ink screen that you see in this sample picture before signing it. But it comes with one small disadvantage. You can't update the device, of course, since it's non-programmable. So this has increasingly come into view because of a very recent case where there was a critical flaw in the Trezor hardware wallets. And Kraken Security Lab recently discovered this flaw, and they found a way to extract the recovery seed phrase from the device when they have physical access to that device. And there's a blog post I'll also leave down in the comments and description below so you can read more in depth about it. At the end of this video, we'll also provide a recommendation for how to patch or find a workaround for this critical flaw. So these vulnerabilities with the storing of the seed phrases on most hardware wallets does not affect Hash Wallet at all. Because like we said earlier, Hash Wallet does not store the recovery seed phrase on the device. So Hash Wallet uses an innovative recovery process where you get an additional seed card, which is shown on this slide. And on initializing the Hash Wallet, the seed phrase will be generated. And the seed phrase will then be cryptographically separated in a recovery seed and recovery key. The recovery seed is stored on the seed card, and the recovery key is stored on the online eSignus vault. The seed card needs to be hidden in a safe place, and both components are needed to restore the wallet, so for a thief, if they only have the seed card stolen, it's still useless by itself. The recovery seed and recovery key are then permanently deleted from the actual hash wallet itself. So one other really interesting feature is the biometric security capability. Fingerprint is used for access to the wallet and the signing of transactions. It ensures the identity of the card holder because your fingerprint is unique, after all. And this is safer than passwords or pin codes that can be stolen, copied, etc. Also, this is more convenient for you because simple touch on the device will give you access. There's also the additional option to add fingerprints of others, like your family members and lawyers for recovery or so forth. So let's touch a little bit on this hash wallet manager that I mentioned earlier. This is a suite of easy and intuitive UI apps for managing funds and interacting with the hardware device. It's suitable for a bunch of different popular OSs and supports all the common coins that you would want. Now let's take a look at the eSignus team led by Daniel Rodriguez, Jose Sendra, and Alvaro Libran. They are focused on the integration of the decentralized economy into the business environments, delivering recognized and truly secure user experiences that enable mass adoption. This is a quote from their website and material. And what about their upcoming roadmap and their special Indiegogo campaign coming up soon? In November of 2019, they underwent the Aero certification program in which their product design was audited as fit for production. In April 28th of this year, 2020, they're going to start their Indiegogo campaign and make 10K units for sale at a discounted price for crowdfunders. And the first batch will go out to early investors in June. 
and then the real manufacturing and shipping of the rest of it will come in November and December of this year. So what is the conclusion or parting thoughts about this hash wallet device? It's definitely a super innovative product with a unique set of properties compared with other hardware wallets. It's extra advantages in securing your wallet and its suitability of course depends on the type of user you are, but it could get pretty popular in our eyes with enhanced security and ease of use features. Too bad it's not available in the short term yet and we'll have to wait a bit, but definitely check out their Indiegogo if you want to get early access. And now, without further ado, the important security recommendation for current Trezor users, which I'm one of them. So the critical flaw was discovered by Kraken, affects both the Trezor 1 and Model T, and you're pretty much safe unless someone gets physical access to your device. But 15 minutes is enough to crack it and get the encrypted seed. For current models, it's impossible to fix this flaw, but users can circumvent this by utilizing the passphrase feature which is an additional 25th word of the seed phrase. So basically your original seed phrase stays the same, but by adding a strong passphrase, it generates a whole different set of addresses and private keys. So these addresses are completely separated from the original 24 word seed phrase without the 25th word passphrase. And then all you have to do is move your funds to the newly generated addresses to keep them safe. So here's a visual example of the passphrase, how you have your recovery seeds, and how if you have no passphrase, a single word, or a longer passphrase, they all generate different wallets, accounts, and addresses. If you're operating under the left side, the set of A wallets, accounts, and addresses, then you should do something like on the C side and move everything to those new addresses. So like I said, the solution, because the passphrase is not remembered on the device, thieves can't get access to the addresses even if they have physical access. So they can only access the original addresses protected by the original 24 wards. So this is obviously a more secure approach, but less convenient because then you need the passphrase to be entered each time to access the wallet. And also just remember, it's really important to back up the passphrase just as securely as a seed phrase, because if you lose your passphrase, that's bye bye to your funds. And this is an advanced feature. So beginners try out with small amounts, test it out carefully, get comfortable, before you move everything over, migrate, and potentially lose it if you don't know what's going on. I'll also leave links to the Trezor tutorial and explainer in the video description. Thank you everyone for watching. What do you think about Hash Wallet? It seems pretty cool and innovative. I really like new approaches to problems that we all face in the space. This creativity is what's necessary for us to reach mass adoption. Also, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Also, feel free to watch these videos up here to support us. Smash that like button. Hit that bell icon. This is Kevin, and I'll catch you guys next time.